we're continuing to explore the practice of mudita. Uh, mudita in Pali, M-U-D-I-T-A, um, translated often as vicarious joy, um, sympathetic joy. Basically, it's happiness for another being's happiness. Happiness for another being's happiness, which is... Um, a wonderful way for us, for our hearts to, to light up, to feel happy for circumstances of happiness, whether it's somebody else, whether it's external or internal. Internal will be expressed as gratitude usually, mudita becomes gratitude. External is this joy for another person's joy, taking delight in someone else's good fortune. Yay, yay. And Sometimes people wonder and ask, what is the relationship between wisdom practices, such as vipassana, mindfulness, seeing things as they are, practicing with seeing, say, impermanence, etc., the wisdom practices? What's the relationship between those and the heart practices? Um, metta, mudita, karuna, compassion, loving kindness, vicarious joy. And of course, they support each other. And in many ways, they are one and the same. When you really deeply practice insight, it opens up to love and compassion and happiness for all beings, uh, good fortune. It just it, And then the other way around, when you deeply practice these practices of the heart, ah, there's a sense of presence and seeing the way things are. It lights up for you. It becomes easier to see. So, so what I want to point out is, as wisdom, when, when our hearts opens up to the wisdom of selflessness, of the sense of, yes, there is the self, we take care of it, of course, it's important, we bathe it and feed it. And yet, as we succeed in not always being so self-centered in our regard, we pop out of that, ah, there's a sense of ease. There can be a sense of um, lightness if we don't keep uh, worrying about the gain and loss of just this person that is me. But when we expand our vision through wisdom practices, then there's a sense of opening to gladness of other people when when. We're not just comparing, oh, is my gladness more than their gladness? It's just happiness in the world. There's this from the perspective of the enlightened mind. And if, if when I say that, you think, well, I'm not enlightened yet. Well, fake it till you become it. Assume in this moment, okay, what if in this, for the next, what, in the, for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to take on the perspective of the enlightened mind. Like, okay, you're in here somewhere. Nikki says, trust that you're in here somewhere. Enlightened perspective, awakened perspective. Ah, can I lean into that? And ah, can I just lean into that? And uh, can I lean into that um, perspective of awakened mind? And like, oh, what if there is more spaciousness and other people's gladness is, is not them and me, the other, not othering, if there's no othering happening, but it's just gladness. It's just goodness in the world. It's just goodness. And your heart can delight. This heart, this heart can just delight in goodness in the world, in gladness. So as we practice tonight with um, vicarious joy, that is the invitation. That is the invitation. And you don't need any previous experience. I'll guide you. And again, if the opposite comes up, whatever comes up, as long as you hold it with kindness, with care, just turn towards it. If, if grief comes up, if sadness comes up, if comparison comes up, if judgment comes up, as long as you turn towards it and hold it with kindness, it's okay, sweetie. It's okay. Kindness, it's okay. It's okay. This universality of kindness 
from the perspective of the awakened mind, applied now to this pain right here, right now, this challenge. You're doing this practice right. So just applying friendliness, friendliness, generosity of heart to whatever arises. Maybe gladness in the world, maybe challenge. It's all good, okay? 